I've had quite a few queries come through recently about Smart Trader compatibility with the Wahoo Kicker Climb, the gradient simulator, training tool, call it what you will, but it's one of the newer devices that's changed the physical experience of riding indoors. Not only do you get the resistance change, but you get gradient change with this unit. So today, I'm going for a bit of a deep dive into how the compatibility works with this unit, why Wahoo have chosen to be compatible with what they are at the moment, and where it might go in the future. Let's jump into it. I'll put a link in the video description below to my video here with the unboxing, configuration, and ride experience of the Wahoo Kicker Climb. But today we're looking at the compatibility and what makes trainers compatible with this unit. First up, it's the physical compatibility with the trainer. The climb will pivot your bike on the rear wheel dropouts where your frame connects to the trainer. The bike sits on the rear axle of a direct drive trainer and is clamped on. So the inside and outside of each dropout plus the rear axle itself, that whole system needs to pivot up and down or you'll effectively be grinding away your rear dropouts. Now, it mightn't be a problem for one or two ups and downs, but you add a few thousand in there, things are gonna end pretty badly over time. The Kicker Snap 17 is a wheel-on trainer that is compatible with the Kicker Climb. We'll pivot from the same spot, but with the end caps on the quick release. So as long as it's not touching the frame, it's all good. At this point in time, I'm not aware of any other direct drive trainer that has a fully pivoting rear axle and clamping area. Some do pivot on one side, but most are static and fixed on the drive side. You may be able to move your bike up and down while it's clamped onto another non-pivoting trainer, but what's happening there is one of two things, maybe both. You're forcing the rear dropouts to move and grind. Yes, there's only a small surface area where the bike actually connects, and if you're lifting your bike up from the front here, there's a lot of force involved and or you're unscrewing your free hub as you do this. That's really not ideal, and over a few thousand uh, ups and downs, things are gonna end in bad news. I think Wahoo have taken a responsible position on this one, making even their previous trainers incompatible with the kicker climb because the rear axle doesn't move, and over time, things will wear out, things will break. Wahoo themselves have always been pretty open about the compatibility options with other smart trainers, assuming they can get that physical pivoting compatible so people won't break their bikes. Here's the CEO of Wahoo, Chip, talking to Martin from Tax on this exact topic here. Stay tuned on this one. But it's not just the physical side of things, it's also the software side of things. The Kicker Climb itself is an invisible device. We don't pair it like a heart rate strap or a cadence sensor or a power meter. The Climb itself pairs directly to the smart trainer for invisibility or compatibility across the board effectively. If you watch my video that I've linked to below about the setup and configuration of this, you'll see that the climb pairs to the trainer, and that's all you really need to do. When your software tells the trainer to do 8%, this thing will read it off the trainer and go to 8%. When your trainer says go to 20%, this thing will rise up to 20%. So it's invisible to the software, so things need to be coded in or factored in the firmware of the, any other smart trainer that's to be compatible with the Kicker Climb. So there we are, there's the answer of why is the Kicker Climb only compatible with Wahoo trainers? It's physical limitations at the moment and software side of things, and it's not a closed door. Stay tuned on this one. Thanks for watching.